Hello, everyone. Anyways, uh, hey, everybody. Uh, Mr. K here. Uh, I'm going to show you after a two-year hiatus from making YouTube videos, and I feel like I probably went from, like, no subscribers to magically 70. So if you like my videos, please subscribe. Uh, I have a feeling uh, I might make more if once I hit 100, um, maybe even before that if I can. Um, we're going to talk today about the video that I made a part one for at 11 o'clock, some uh, October, November evening in 2020. Um, uh, and uh, I, I just gave up on it. We made Master Sketch. This is for the, the module um, multiple, multi part uh, part studios. And uh, uh, do the primary sketch, you make it in some strange way. And then basically they tell you, hey, copy our example. Like, or, just make a copy of it, start with that. Uh, there's no fun in that. I mean, you can do it. If you make a copy of it, you can derive it into your workbook if you want to. You can start with the drawing. I'm gonna show you a couple extra steps that got me uh, tripped up a couple years ago and I wanna make your example just like theirs. The first thing that you can do, make a copy of your master sketch, primary sketch, again, whatever you wanna call it. And if we hop into it, there's a dimension that you need to plug in. This kind of not whole number, 17.09 or 039, excuse me, is uh, absolutely critical to making this whole thing work if you want it to look like what they have. Um, so it's a dimension between this construction line and this point right here. That's all you gotta do, 17.039. If you don't see these two things move together as they should, then you forgot to do something correctly in the last video. You should go back and make sure these two things are symmetric. Anyways, now that we have that, we can continue to move on. Anyways, we're gonna make an extrusion. We need to make this large arm. That's what we're gonna start with. Um, we're gonna extrude uh, towards us. Uh, and then uh, we're gonna make a small arm. So uh, hop out of here, hop into isometric, grab our extrude. I'm gonna grab these two little bits first because they're tiny. Grab that little donut there, and then we're gonna keep going all the way around. Grab all the little things except for the small holes, the small circles. I believe it's gonna be five. I'm gonna rename this to large arm. And then we're gonna get a part down here, part one, large arm. Hopefully I can get us through this within a reasonable amount of time. But I hit extrude again. I'm gonna call this small arm just to keep a nice naming convention. I'm gonna spin around other side here and we're gonna take a look. I got these extrudes. Now it's not getting this area and I wanna flip it towards me. I wanna do a new extrusion and I need to get these tiny little guys here. Now we just wanna take a quick look at this uh, in the, 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 the example here, make sure that we're kind of going the right direction. Looks like we're extruding off of it in the other, other direction. That looks good to me. Five millimeters again is good. So this sketch plane right here, we can make a new sketch on this surface here if we want to try doing that. Uh, we could also probably sketch on the front plane without too much issue. So it's up to you. You're making a new sketch. You can choose like this sketch plane here. I can turn off primary sketch to get the way it looks in their video, or I can choose front. Same darn thing. If I hit the check, I'm gonna turn on my primary sketch again because I actually want this dot and I want this line. Like they're actually, again, critical to uh, getting this thing right. Uh, this step can be confusing if you're working from your primary sketch, master sketch example. The next step, is for us to create this box. Now, what's super frustrating and why I got fed up with this exercise two years ago at 11 o'clock at night is this box doesn't have any dimensions on it. All it gives us is one, 10, and 10. They do not help us at all to find this box. So I did a little digging very quickly, thanks to my student, Emily, helping me with this. Uh, and if you create a center point rectangle from the center point of this circle here, and you pop a dimension on it, Whoa, I don't want to search. I just want to make a dimension. What we can actually plug in here is, again, a not totally whole number, but it's the number that works for uh, Onshape example. Uh, Learn.onshape.org, 32.078. Kind of weird, but it works. And we're going to set this equal to this if it lets me. The thing that we want to see, let me drag this dimension up. 
is that there's a dimension between this and this of one. Beautiful. That is what they give us here. And that's what we want. So I grab my line tool before I said anything. I'm gonna do uh, LQ and I'm going to get a construction line. So just need the line tool and construction and grab a line again. And I, I really wish mirror had a shortcut, but it doesn't. So we're gonna click on it, mirror this over. Now there's two dimensions on this. This line is 10 and the distance between these points is 10. Nice little triangle right there. The triangle is weirdly not linked to this. It's just kind of floating on this side of the rectangle. We're gonna hit the check and uh, our next step is to make a new sketch down here on, on the small arm. And we need to make the same thing, same darn thing a second time. Now I can click that and grab my equals constraint. I can set this equal to that and this equal to that. And that's easy. I don't need to do those dimensions anymore. I could check and see if that's a one millimeter dimension, but I kind of have a feeling it is. Uh, LQ, construction line from the midpoint there on up. And my headphones just turned off, which is not a big deal because I'm not actually listening to anything right now, except for myself through my headphones, strangely enough. Grab the L, click that there. Again, on shape, seriously, give us a mirror tool shortcut. If there is one, someone please tell me in the comments. That would be beautiful. Uh, additionally, I, I don't know, like, if I get if I get like a hundred subscribers, I'll be making some more videos. I, I have a feeling I'm gonna be going through. All right, so dimensions look good here. I'm gonna be going through and doing a bunch more uh, tutorials, even the ones that I don't do in my class. I, ha I have a feeling it's gonna be happening because I mean, 2,000 views on one video, it's pretty sick. All right, I've distracted y'all enough. And weird flexes, you know. These two sketches right here, I'm just gonna say uh, rename like uh, large arm, lass, and uh, sass. How's that sound? Large arm sketch, uh, small arm sketch, just to save time because I've been talking about other random things. We've done these two things. Those are good. We need to make a mid plane now. So the plane is going to help us extrude something in a moment and hopefully I don't uh, mess it up because I feel like this is another place where I messed up a couple years ago. We're going to select this surface here. We're going to create a new offset plane. I'm going to flip it in the other direction because I believe that's what they tell us to do. And it's going to be 25, right? Yeah, 25. Look at that. 25 already in here. And we're going to call it mid plane. Boom. Hit the check. And now we have to do some weird business with extruding. I'm gonna turn off, eh, I can't turn off that sketch. I may turn off these sketches though, because we'll see, we'll see what we gotta extrude in a moment. The first thing we have to extrude are these pins right here, this pin and this pin. So there's a large arm pin and we're choosing the medium circle to extrude. I believe if I'm not mistaken, they're having us extrude the center like of the donut and the donut ring. So we have large arm pin and pivot pin. We're extruding them two directions. One face is the face of extrude one, what we just clicked on to make that plane a moment ago. The other face is the actual mid plane. And it gets a little confusing here, I'll admit, because when you hit extrude, sometimes things don't show up right. Sometimes you might have a sketch uh, obfuscating something else. We're gonna make this a new extrude. I just realized down here, this should actually be called small arm, but we'll get to that in a sec. It's gonna be a new extrude. I'm gonna flip it. I'm also gonna say up to face. It needs to be up to this face. I also need to kind of turn off that small arm for a hot second. And in the faces and regions to extrude, I need to grab these two right here as well. So we have currently two new objects that are extruding up to this surface. Now in the same extrude, we're gonna do second end position. Instead of blind, we're also going to do up to face. And I'm gonna select this right here. Now, you'll be like, Mr. K, I see the, the, the weird vibrating lines in the wall. The shapes are like intersecting with each other. I don't like it. Now, that's fine. Uh, that's what we're gonna fix up in the next step. 
before we do that, just to make things nice, small arm, and then what naming convention do they use? Large arm pin and pivot pin. So up here, large arm flap and pivot pin. Mm. We're gonna say pivot pin. <laughs> Anyways, once we get to the next step, we need to make a little pin down here. We're gonna again choose the medium circle and the thing inside. And we're gonna go through the same uh, type of stuff we did before. Well, we're gonna do two end positions or two, pos two directions is what I should say. Uh, and it'll look kind of strange at first, but uh, it, it'll, it'll turn out, don't worry. Extrude, small circle, big circle, up the face, mid plane is our first direction, second end position, whoops, up to face. And then for this one, it's actually going to be this surface right here for the small arm. Now, direction, direction, add, what did I do wrong? I chose this second end position. Where are you going wrong? Oh, you don't have to do it. Herder, cuz our sketch is right here. So my bad. If you make a new extrusion, it's not like this one where our sketch is here. It's actually like right there. So as I said in the video, or step by step right here, up the face once, up to the mid plane, you're good to go. So uh, this right here is going to be called what? Uh, they just say the third pin, rename the part small arm pin. So small, small arm pin. So we can rename these things. What do they call this? Pivot pin and sap, small arm pin. Anyways, now that we have this, we can do a, a nifty uh, feature uh, called um, Boolean. It's up here. Boolean works uh, in mysterious ways. It's actually quite simple. You can either add, uh, subtract things or figure out uh, where things intersect. Um, we're actually going to use subtract. And what they want us to do is uh, the tools are gonna be the large arm and the small arm. So I can just click down here and shift. The targets are gonna be the pins that we've created. And we're gonna keep the tools. We're gonna keep these things. We don't want them to disappear. Now, if I hit the check, what it's done is it made it so we don't see that intersection between parts. We don't see that vibration. So if I turn off the large arm, uh, what's actually happened, I can turn off the primary sketch for a sec here, is uh, we subtracted where the uh, large arm was intersecting with this pin here, uh, and we now have a nice clean pin. So Boolean, really nice feature um, all around in Onshape when you're modeling stuff and you just wanna do kind of like chunky monkey models. They're, they're nothing crazy, nothing fancy, and you wanna kind of go wild and then clean things up as you go. All right, so I'm gonna turn these two sketches back on because we're gonna need them in a second. Primary sketch, I don't know if we actually need again. Yeah, we're going to utilize these. Now this extrude is also slightly tricky. We'll see if my brain farts again or not. Uh, we're going to grab the faces that we need except for the little triangles and then we're gonna extrude up to face to the mid plane. So, extrude, shift D. We're gonna grab this. It'll look weird because it's kind of taking uh, some line work from your small or large arm. So you just gotta select a couple of objects there. Again, we're not doing blind because if we did blind, it would be stepped like this. We don't want that. We just wanna go up to face and the face we're going to is the mid plane. So then it looks nice and clean like this, like that. Look at it, it's amazing. Um, it's actually working. We'll see whether or not my video goes way wrong in a couple minutes. Um, so uh, this this part right here, uh, this is our large arm grip. And this one is our small arm grip. And now that we have this, we can 
continue on. We need to make little pins. Really straightforward, hopefully, again. I believe they may have us do, um, like, kind of, sort of, uh, a, a mirror, a part mirror, um, in order to make it bigger. And, and, and then we're, we're home free. We're home free. Um, anyways, we'll go here. And we need to go up to face. And I, I feel like they're doing a second end position, but it's like not totally clear. No, I extruded improperly. When you extrude your box here, you also want to grab the circle. Whoopsie daisies. Go on back, y'all. Now that we have that solid there and it looks exactly like what they have, I did make another mistake. So another 25 cents in my piggy bank. Uh, I'm going to hit extrude here. We're going to do up to face. We're going to say add. And I need one here. The face is going to be here. Merge scope is going to be that. Can we do this in the same? Maybe. No, we don't want to do it like that because... Do, 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 they need to be separate. So, small arm, that's our large arm done. My headphones turned off again, which is frightening. They make such a loud noise. Second extrude, up to face, that's our face. It's going to be an extrude add. Merge scope is the small arm grip. Bing, bang, boom. Now we just gotta mirror this part and hopefully we're we're pretty much home scot free mirror entities to mirror this one and this one mirror plane boom and they should be ads now i don't know if we're going to have to do two separate ones or if it'll just let me do all together we'll see Eh, I don't like that because it's adding it to everything else. Bing, bang, boom. Let's turn off that mid plane. Let's also turn off these sketches. And it looks like we've pretty much done it. Like if, if we wanted to mirror everything over, we could have the gripper, uh, which we'll probably not see the end of. Uh, we just got to do a couple extra little bits. This fillet should be dumb simple. Uh, we're going to fillet each one of these edges to about, I think, two millimeters, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and, and hopefully this video is a little under, uh, you know, like 30 minutes. I, I feel like I've done it in about 20, maybe, uh, which would be like hardcore. Let's go. Like, you know, we, we like to get it done within a reasonable amount of time. Um, Hopefully y'all have been enjoying my videos the last two years. Um, I, I really am thankful to you, those of you who subscribe. Um, if you have questions or like you want me to make any additional videos, comments, uh, feedback, whatever it might be, please reach out to me. Um, you can just pop a comment on this. Uh, I believe my Twitter these days is kd2rgz. Um, if you don't want to get me on Twitter, uh, there's a link to my website. Uh, you can get my contact info on there as well. And my website's bclevins.github.io. So um, for those of you that have stuck with me, thank you. Uh, take care. Have a good one. And uh, yeah, stay well.